Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Welcome to MST.TV and as per MST TV tradition, whenever a main set drops, we do the full set analysis. This is part one, which is all the secrets and all the starlights and all the hype cards behind it. And as a part of this tradition, I have to guess their price without looking at the pre-sale prices. Side note here, I don't really believe in pre-sale. I feel like it's a little scammy, a little gambly, like, oh, so, you know, that's my personal belief. But jumping back into the set, you know what, let's not waste any time. Let's start it off. For all the secrets, we have triple Tactical Talents, Forbidden Droplets, Dogmatica Fleur de Lis, uh, Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, Dogmatica Maximus, and Chaos Ruler, the Magical Chaos Dragon. And the remaining four Fallen of the Albaz, the Nadir Servant, Ad Emancipator Friends, and Titanoclad Ash Dragon. Okay, let's jump back for a second. Okay, triple tactics talents, or rather three tactics talents, whatever the guys want to call it. This is the card that is insane. This is the one that is probably the most expensive. My guess on the high price is about 70 to $80. That's a fair price, I guess. Okay, let's be honest here. It's probably like $99, but I, I, I'm i just optimistic that it would be lower. Settle price, it's probably gonna settle around 70 to $80. It's just one of those cards. Unless no one plays this card, then we'll be fine. But the thing is, the fact is, it's probably gonna get a lot of play time because everyone's hyped up around it with like, oh, they activate a hand trap, I get to pot agree, change a heart, or forceful sentry. That's a pretty big, impactful play if you successfully resolve this card. Sure, it's once per turn, but what if you get hit by like an imperm? Then you can't really activate this card, now you have a dead card in your hand. But is it really that dead? I mean, you can still technically use it the next turn. It's very likely that you will use it the next turn. And uh, I guess there's another card that could potentially lock it out, Droll and Lockbird, that's a potential card. But Droll isn't exactly in the format right now. Will it even be in the format for Dogmaticas? Uh, some say yes, some say no. Dogmatica, they search about twice, but it depends on where they you know, start their search point. But if you can go ahead and activate this card and successfully resolve it, even a forceful sentry is still pretty good. If someone ashes you, and then you use forceful sentry, get rid of the Nibiru that is to follow up. That's a valid response, and then you can actually fully do your combo, and your opponent's basically dead because they're down to three cards, and they're going to four with like four negates. It's over. So that's my guess for ta three tactical talents. Do I want three copies of this card? Yes, it's too valid not to play. Next we have Forbidden Droplets, a card that I equally want just as much. Uh, high price wise, this one's probably about 70 or $80 a copy. I'm hoping I'm wrong. Seriously, please tell me I'm wrong. And then settle price maybe $60, but at least this is a, what I'm willing to pay for them. 100% meta impact guaranteed because it has basically a spell speed four level forbidden chalice that can hit multiple monsters, but it does come with, of course, a cost where you have to send cards into the graveyard. Now you have to send it from your hand or field and it can be any card. So this is actually kind of useful to me because you can send some of the monsters on the field that perhaps your opponent targets and just trying to hit your stuff, but you can get rid of it so that say they try to imperm you and you just use Forbidden Droplets as a, some sort of chain to follow up to make sure that your effect still goes through and you can turn off your opponent's effect. There's a lot of flexible play with this card and I think the top tier level players are going to abuse that fact. And since your opponent cannot respond depending on what type of card you send, it's pretty impactful and if you have like cards are stuck on the field say like an altar guys player you don't want to deal with say cards like red reboot or something like that well probably not red reboot but like that was a bad example but you don't want them to use traps so perhaps you'll send one of your traps into the graveyard or you can send your mel you seek to the graveyard with the droplets turn off your opponent's other monster effect get your search turn off an appaloosa something along those lines but yeah this is 100% one of the money cards and one of the cards that people are definitely seeking out. Then we have Dogmatica Fleur de Lis. In fact, we're just going to talk about Dogmatica right here. And we're going to compare them with Zodiac. Like, back in the day, I didn't think that Konami would you know, put one archetype and shove a ton of secret rares in there. And Zodiac was the that time in Yu-Gi-Oh! where I did make a point in the discussion where like, oh my god, Zodiac is so expensive. They actually made three secret rares. Well, guess what, guys? They put four secret rares in this set. In fact, they did way more than that because Zodiac, they had like one or two ultra rares. I think it was just one ultra, it was Thoroughblade. And then this one, you've got, of course, one of your key one, Asclasia. Is that her name? I hope I pronounced it right. She's a, an ultra rare, but if you want to play max rarity, you're going to have to get those uh, Starlight Rare versions of it. And I'm like, oh my god. I believe there's other ultra rares as well. But this archetype is going to be ready to break your bank, break your wallet. High price, probably about 50 bucks. That's my guess. Because I think it's getting overshadowed by triple tactical talents and forbidden droplets. Unless this isn't a curve anymore, this is just a really high plane where everything is super expensive, then you can expect complete case buyouts of this entire set because the content itself 
in the secondary market would be worth more than just buying the, the case itself. I'm no, I'm pretty interested in getting a case. Of course, this card, you know, jumping back to Fleur Delis, Fleur Delis uh, there's also a special summon, it's a quick effect, and then if you control another Dogmatica monster, you get to negate a monster on the field, which is a pretty big thing. Of course, this is part of the engine. If you're gonna play a small package, this is of course one of those cards that you're going to need. Next, we have Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, and you bet we're gonna read this card. Height price wise, maybe 30 bucks. It's a pretty big pendulum, pen 12 scale. Holy, that's a pretty big card. But settle price, probably 20 bucks. I think there's like a lot of restrictions. And you bet we are going to read this particular card. Okay, we're gonna read all the card effects. So as a pendulum scale, you cannot pendulum monsters except for dragon monsters. And this effect cannot be negated. It's a condition, okay? It's a con it's it's a continuous like condition, okay? And uh, you can target one dragon fusion, exceed synchro in your graveyard, destroy this card, special summon that monster. In other words, it gives you back your what do you even want to summon? I guess your odd eyes vortex dragon. Cool. Why why not? All right, all right. Next we have okay. We have the monster effect. It cannot be normal summon or set. It must be either be pendulum summoned from the hand or special summoned from your hand by tributing three dragons, one of fusion, synchro, and exceeds. And uh, what, what's the attack of this guy? Like, I don't even know. It's is there a question mark? It's a question mark. And um, okay, you can discard this card and pay 500 life points to add a level eight or lower pendulum dragon from your deck to your hand. Okay, so it's a search card, and this card gains attack and defense equals to your half of your opponent's life points and uh, once per turn pay half your life and shuffle all other cards on the field to the uh what shuffle all other cards in the field angry event to the deck okay wow so he's got a lot of effects i think still it's it's not gonna be as popular for sure i know trift is probably hyping this one i was like he's super excited for this because it is a pen card and he's the so-called i thought he gave up on pens on twitter maybe he's just trolling but yeah i don't know this one's kind of not the one that you're probably the most after for sure next we have dogmatica maximus high price probably about 40 bucks subtle price i'm actually tanking this one quite far down it's probably gonna be about 25 bucks or so or maybe even less the reason for this okay okay dogmatica maximus is a very powerful card upon release people are going to like eat it like no tomorrow the effect is really powerful you get to send two of your cards send two of your opponents extra deck to the graveyard however the problem with this is that people will adapt they're going to put cyber dragon nova and also put mecha bot into the extra deck and now they're going to summon a mecha bot on top of that they'll put one copy of emptis in there so that when you activate dogmatica maximus you're going to get your field blown up and that part is going to be very painful and now they're going to settle on a mecha bot and put the mecha bot they're gonna have the negation on you, and this is turn one. That's uh, that's not gonna be good. So that's why I think people are going to adapt to it, they're gonna play around it, and it's just gonna be a lot harder. But for combo decks that with extra tech, extra, not tech, but extra tight, extra deck space, it's a little bit harder to play around this card, simply because it's just such a big deal card, but you'll just have to get rid of some of the more techy options when they throw this card on you. Next we have Chaos Ruler, probably not the most sought after, high price, 25 bucks, maybe settle on 20. It's not like a super heavy impact card, but I know that if we still had Chaos Dragons available, like I guess not Chaos Dragon, but like Dragon Link with the Synchro 8. The thing is, Synchro 8 slot is usually taken by the Borlo Savage Dragon. There's no doubt. That card is strong and negates. It's hard to play around in a simplified game, so it wins games. This one is more like a board setter where you get to Synchro into two, this card, excavate five cards, send four to the grave, add one light or dark to your hand. And then it has a self revival effect, which is pretty neat too. If you're gonna go in to play rank eights with a chaos like engine, then this is a card for you. Next, we have Fallout of Albaz. This one is the dud secret. You don't wanna pull this card if you see it. You're gonna get hyped up, and then you're gonna be really sad that you see the dark attribute. Hype price 10 to 15 bucks, my guess, and settle around 10. Dark Maticas don't even play this card. They don't fuse into Tanaclad Ash Dragon, so there's no real point. Now, that being said, it's not the only real reason here, uh, but I think that you shouldn't underestimate this card because there might be a boost for this particular archetype in Phantom Rage. I think there's more fusion options for the Fallen of Albaz, so keep your eyes peeled on that one. There could be a chance that if it is meta, it'll be spiking this card up because now you have to actually fuse and maybe a card you should hold on to if you do pull it, but I wouldn't be too sad if you actually let it go. Okay, next card here is a bit of a money card. It is the Nadir Servant. Nadir, isn't that Farfa's name? 
This is Farfa's Servant. So high price of $40 to $50. This is the Dogmatica's Rhoda. It's super important to have. And it sends a card out of your extra deck into the graveyard. In fact, I think it is actually one of the more key cards of the entire deck. You get to like do the whole Shadol combo with this. It's pretty insane. You send like Apcolone in there. Apcolone does something else, sends another card to the graveyard. Then you go into Maximus, send your constructs into the graveyard. Now you can actually set up your entire play, which I think is pretty sick. And uh, that's just through the one copy of uh, Nadir. So that's a, that's a pretty insane combo. Um, that's why I think it's around that. Probably settle price, maybe $30 to $40, uh, if that even. Like, usually, something usually falls down. It's really hard to tell when you have two monstrous cards, like Triple Tactical Talents and the Forbidden Droplets so high up there. Would it mean the Archetype cards would drop down? Sometimes it does, sometimes everything is just Mount Everest for no reason. Next, the spell card that you do not want to see in your packs, Ad Emancipator Friends. High price 10 bucks, settle price 10 bucks. Unless you find a way to actually play a full on rock deck, this isn't exactly the most ideal card. Maybe you can actually do rock stun. If it's rock stun, absolutely play this card. Because it lets you excavate five plus cards plus whatever level of like rocks that you have on the field. I guess if you have more rocks in the field, you get to excavate more cards and they get to add a rock equal to the amount of cards you excavated, but it has a hard rock restriction. And uh, therefore you can't really use it with Ad Emancipators because you can't do your Synchro plays as well. I guess you technically can, but you can't go into Borlode Savage, you can't go into your Link plays. It's a, it's a very limiting card. If this card didn't have that limitation, hands down one of the best cards you can actually give to the entire Rock deck. But if you're gonna be going into like Rock Stun, Fossil Dyna, Kawaki Meru, this is actually not that bad. It's actually pretty decent. And then we have, finally, the last card, a Titanic Cloud, the Ash Dragon. Uh, no Bastard Dragon here. The hype price is $20 to $30. You have to have this card or else you can't really play Nadir. Well, you can technically play Nadir Servant, but this is your way to give yourself another ability to search because you can now search out, uh, I guess, another Dogmatica card, which is pretty awesome. You probably won like one or two copies, maybe even three copies in one deck. It's really useful for like punishment target, you know, give you additional search. And of course the other option is to throw away Entis. And it's, 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 it's. You can throw that card out instead and you get to pop an additional card. But that's what I think about this card. Am I right about the prices? Am I wrong about the prices? How wrong am I? Oh my God, leave it down in the comment section below. And let's go into all the prismatics and all the starlight rares that I'm probably gonna guess the wrong prices on for each one. And ah, look at this price point. <laughs> Triple Tactics Talent, Wind, the Wind Channeler, Dogmatica Ecclesia, the Gaia the Magical Knight, and DD Crow. These are all of our Starlight Rare lineup. Price point wise, Triple Tactic Talent, this is the Lightning Storm of the set. Super expensive, probably gonna be like Appaloosa range. I mean, my price guess right now is 500 bucks. Is that how much you can pay for one of these? It's probably gonna go up to like a grand if it's like super played, but if it's like tanks, Still super collectible. Just look at all the collector rare stuff. Like, gets pretty pricey, guys. Let me tell you that. So, money card right there. If you pull it, congratulations. Sell it. Pay your rent. So don't you get you don't get evicted. Don't drop your stimulus on this one. I'm not sure if you are. You guys getting another stimulus? I don't even know. Then there's win the wind channeler. Price guess wise is 250 bucks. Probably the. I don't think it's the least popular. I think Gaia is a little less popular unless you're an OG fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! But for this one, if you want to play a max rarity charmer deck, I mean, isn't there like a structure deck coming out in the future? Hopefully there is for TCG as well. I don't think there's anything confirmed just yet. But like if it does come out, you can play a max rarity charmer deck. Put all of these charmers at max rarity like your extra deck will have like three copies of all the starlight versions just break the bank on these maybe you can have the most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh deck at max rarity is that even going to be a thing i don't know it's, it's going to be pretty hard we're, we're not talking prize cards here because that's a different story but you know just the stuff that you can actually just buy and of course this one comes with a bit of a waifu tax and next another card that comes with a waifu tax we have dogmatica ecclesia Okay, the Ultra Rare is going to be like $20, $30, and it's going to be like a 3 of. You're going to have to pick it up regardless. But in terms of the maximum rarity, we're talking about the Starlight. My guess is 300 It's not like the most generic card, 
so I'm not putting it all the way up there, but it's it's up there. I, the, the collector's market, I don't even know how this thing even works. <laughs> I'm just a noob trying to pretend I know what I'm talking about. Okay, but let's talk about this card. Waifu tax, check. Engine card, check. Top tier material, check. It checks three of the things that make things expensive, but it's a collector item too, so it gets even worse. Is this card friendly for your wallet? No, definitely not. It's going to break your bank, and uh, I hope you guys pull it. You know what? Your thumbs up to that. If you guys bless you guys, hope you pull it, and you guys can bless me by hitting that thumbs up button and hit subscribe and ding the notification bell as we continue with this segment. And then we have Gaia the Magical Knight. OG fans, of course, would love this card. It's Gaia the Dragon Champion. I guess it's about $200, maybe the cover card. It's, a, it's not as uh, popular as an archetype, but... It's a collectible item for sure, regardless. And I think it actually looks pretty badass. And then finally we have DD Crow. DD Crow, three to four hundred dollars on the drop, and then maybe five hundred. It's like, okay, DD Crow is in that weird spot where some people say it's better or just as good as Valor in terms of its utility. Of course, Valor's negation has a lot more flexibility, and DD Crow deals with everything in the graveyard for the most part. And it is such a classic hand trap that has been part of the game for a very very long time, I think since Strike of Neos. Now this card, very comparable to Effect Veiler. Both DD Crow and Effect Veiler, they have rare versions. Both DD Crow and Effect Veiler have ulti versions. Both DD Crow and Effect Veiler, I believe they all have Super and Ultra. This is why they are so comparable to each other, because they all split down the line, have the exact same rarity. And DD Crow sharing the same line as Effect Veiler makes a lot of sense to me. So yeah, this is the big money area, $500. I think that's around where Valor was at when I last checked. So there you have it. If you guys pull it, congratulations. And let's go on to some of the hype cards and some of my hype picks. For my hype picks, we have Blizzard, the spell card, Nemesis Keystone, Gizmek Okami. We have Infernoble Knights and we have Edge Imp Scythe. These are my five picks. I could have added a couple additional cards like Fury of the Kyrusian, but the thing is, there's no point. That card's already released, so it's not as hyped up as it needs to be. Blizzard is interesting because it is, of course, one way to turn off your Mystic Mind and turn off Dark Ruler no more. They could add the card back, but they basically, they're stuck without any sort of response. And you can perhaps even turn off Forbidden Droplets if your opponent tries to negate your board. I think this is why this card is kind of important. And if all you need is to buy that one turn worth of time to OTK your opponent the next turn, this card makes it as a pretty decent option, in my opinion. And you can, of course, turn off Mystic Mind, which I think is a pretty key one. You're like, your opponent goes, oh, I'm going to use Metaverse. Well, here's a Blizzard, and I'm going to destroy that Mystic Mind and deal all the damage I can to push over the game right away before it becomes an, an additional issue here. Next, Nemesis Keystone. There's potential play for Adamancipator. Uh, block Dragon Surge, you're going to have to get a level 3. I think the level 3 that is the most ideal target is... Uh, uh, I guess the Sentry of Stone, like, yeah, that Stone Soldier of Stone, like the the, the the retrained version of that, or you need a level 5 Rock Monster. If you guys know a level 5 Rock Monster that is a potential extender that isn't Big Piece Golem, leave it down in the comment section. And then we have Gizmek Okami. This one is, of course, the next Gizmek Monster. It's a Nuker. Pay 1,500 life points, kill everything in from the extra deck. And it's an easy special summon. As long as there's two plus extra deck monsters summoned up there, then you can just summon it out. And uh, it's big. It's a big monster. And of course, the entire Infernoble Knight archetype. This is way easier to get than Dogmatica. Like, way easier. And the archetype is super strong. It's the next combo deck. Definitely a meta contender. And especially if you have kept up to date with your Gear Freeds and all those cards. And I think there's the uh, Renaud in the Toon Chaos. If you kept up with your collection there, well, congratulations. You will be ready to play the Infernoble Knights as long as you have all your warriors ready. And as for Edgem Scythe, I know people don't really talk about like Fluffles very often, but I've been a bit of a fan of the archetype for some time now. And this is a card that they like they desperately needed. Aside from like the Dolphin, this is the card that turns their plays into a hand trap. It gives them a disruption and a pop and a body that potentially is over 4,000 attack. So it's a very scary thought to give like a hand trap that lets you play on your opponent's turn. And if your opponent is trying to establish a board and you get hit by Edgem Scythe, your board is already broken before it even passes to their turn, which is why I think this card is crucial. And these are some of my picks, all right? So don't forget, this is only the first part of the 
a full set analysis of Rise of the Duelist. There's going to be more stuff. I think tomorrow we got ourselves all of the underrated cards. I'm going to read all the cards with you guys as quickly as possible so that you guys know all the underrated and underappreciated archetypes and perhaps you can find the hidden gems among those. So make sure you guys subscribe for that. So what do you guys like about this set? Do you think this set holds up? Do you think it's a major game changer because it is a green set? And do you think Phantom Rage is going to be the set after that's going to even change the meta even further? Let me know down in the comment section below and let me know what your favorite cards are. And until next time, don't forget to hold on to MST.TV and I'll see you guys in the next one.